I've done a video on this channel about midges, which are a nuisance, but they're really not dangerous. I've done one on adders, which are dangerous, but they're very unlikely to bite you unless you actually pick them up. And nobody in this country has been killed by an adder in 50 years. Ticks, on the other hand, you do need to take seriously because they carry Lyme's disease, which can be very serious if it's not treated. There are, however, a few things that you can do to prevent yourself from being bitten by ticks. And if you do get one attached to you, there are some things you can do to make it very unlikely that you'll get the disease. Ticks are tiny parasitic animals. They're related to spiders, but they're only a few millimetres long. In the wild, they survive from feeding on sheep or deer or other animals. It's believed they've been on this planet for 200 million years, and they've been found encased in amber from 90 million years ago. They're incredibly tough. They can survive sub-zero temperatures, and they've been found in Antarctica feeding on penguins. They're also known to survive underwater while attached to the penguins. In Scotland, there are about 20 different species of tick you're likely to come across, but the one you're most likely to see is the sheep tick, Ixoides ricinus. When a tick wants to feed, it'll climb up to the top of some tall grass or other vegetation and wait. They've got hooks on the ends of their legs, and when an animal passes by, these hooks will catch on the animal's fur, and the tick will climb on board. It'll then crawl around the animal till it finds a suitable place, and feed from the animal's blood. If it's left undisturbed, it can feed for up to a week. It'll swell up to the size of a pea, and turn a light grey colour. Ticks cannot survive indoors so you can't get an infestation in your home. But when you get back from walking in the hills, make sure you brush off all of your clothes to knock off any live ticks that are crawling around. Also, if you've had your dog out with you, give your dog a good brush before it's allowed indoors as well. Dog's fur is ideal for the hooks on the tick's legs to catch onto. The dogs love running through the long grass where ticks are most often found. Not all ticks are infectious. They can't have the disease themselves, and they can't pass it on to their young. They get the disease from feeding from an infected animal, normally a mouse or a vole. They can then pass the disease on to the next animal they feed on. If that animal is a deer, then antibodies in the deer will actually kill the disease in the tick, preventing it from passing it on any further. Humans and dogs, however, don't have antibodies that can deal with Lyme's disease, and that's where the problems are. So how do you prevent yourself from getting bitten by a tick? Well, first, try to stick to the line of the path. Don't go wandering off into long grass or vegetation. Remember, ticks climb up long grass when they want to climb aboard an animal. Secondly, don't wear shorts, and tuck your trousers into your socks or wear gaiters. You might look silly, but if tick can't get to bare skin, it can't bite you. Also, use an insect repellent. Anything that works on midges is likely to work on ticks as well. You can also get some that you spray directly onto your clothes or onto dog's fur to deter them. I will always carry an insect repellent as part of my essential kit. If you're unlucky and you do get a tick attached to you, you may not even realise it. The bites don't hurt and sometimes they don't even itch. Ticks, although they grow quite large when they've been feeding, start off very small. So it's really important to check yourself all over after you've been out walking to make sure you don't have any ticks attached. I tend to have a shower when I get back from walking and have a good check in the shower to make sure I don't have any ticks attached to me. If you have got one attached, you need to remove it as soon as possible. If they're removed within 24 hours, it's very unlikely that they'll be able to pass Lyme's disease on to you. So the sooner you find them and remove them, the better. To remove a tick, you can either use very fine tweezers or a special tick removal tool. 
like this. You use it by simply sliding the tick remover under the tick as close to the skin as possible and pulling. Using one of these helps to prevent damaging the tick as it gets pulled out. Once you've removed it, clean the area thoroughly with antiseptic. If you do get a tick attached to you, keep an eye on the area where you were bitten. One of the symptoms of Lyme's disease is a red rash that appears in a ring around the bite site. The rash normally develops after about a week, but it can be several months, so keep your eyes open. Other symptoms include a high temperature, tiredness, headaches, and muscle and joint pain. If you get any of these symptoms or the rash after being bitten by a tick, go and talk to your GP. There are antibiotics that they can give you to treat it, but the sooner you get them, the better. Ticks are just one of these things that you need to be aware of when walking in southern Scotland or anywhere in Britain. But just take a few simple precautions to prevent yourself from getting bitten and know what to do if you do get one attached to you to prevent them from spoiling your adventure on the Southern Upland Way. I appreciate that like might not be the word you would use to describe blood-sucking parasites, but if you found this video useful, please do click the like button below. I promise you, not all my videos are this icky. I'm doing one at the moment about red squirrels. If ticks are the worst animal you're going to meet on the Southern Upland Way, red squirrels have got to be one of the best. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss that one.